Hello, in this presentation, we will compare QuickBooks Online versus QuickBooks Desktop. Hello, in this presentation, we will talk about the employee section or a payroll section within QuickBooks Online. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are within the QuickBooks Online dashboard. We will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. We're looking at the common cycles that we have here now looking through the employee or payroll cycle. We're going to select this icon up top, the little plus icon, to see our common cycles. It's important to think of these things through cycles. Think of these processes, these normal items that we will be doing within the accounting process within cycles because that allows us to think through and visualize picture what the processes will be doing we've taken a look at the customer cycle that that could also be the accounts receivable or sales cycle the purchases cycle or the vendors cycle the expense cycle possibly you can think of it as and now we're looking at the employees cycle so this is obviously going to be the payroll cycle before we go into this items here in quickbooks online want to take a quick look at the QuickBooks desktop version in terms of the home page for a couple different reasons. One, we'll see that flow. We'll see the flow of how things will be input and what documents will be seen in a pictorial fashion. And two, if you're used to the QuickBooks desktop version, then you may be used to that format and it'll be more familiar to you to kind of see that process, even if we don't need it necessarily because uh, once we can visualize that process, then we're just going to use these items and it's not necessary to have that visual processing anymore. But if we're just starting, and even if we've done this a few times, it's, it's nice to have that visual uh, component at first. So let's take a look at that now. So this is actually the desktop version, and we're just looking at the home page. And our goal here is just to get an idea of what these flows look like, what the forms that we will be filling in, what the data input will be processed through in terms of a flow chart. And we'll also just get a familiarity with the desktop uh, version in terms of the flow chart so that we can find those same items located in the online version. We've taken a look at the processes for the vendors, the payable section, the customer section, or the receivable or sales section. We're looking here at the employee section. Now, one reason it's, it's nice to think about things in terms of these sections is this is really how you would be processing things through. And it's how basically you might be working if working in a larger accounting department within one of these particular areas of the accounting process. Payroll is, in particular, a very uh, specialized field more and more because payroll is becoming more and more complex uh, to deal with, especially if we have different locations and whatnot. So there's a lot of different options. We'll talk more about those different options in terms of how to process payroll within QuickBooks. But no matter what the process for payroll is, we typically will have a nice little flow chart here, which will be, one, we're going to enter time in some way. Now, this time item, we're not actually going to use uh, in QuickBooks here, although it can be useful. What this will do is track it. It's kind of like you can think of it as punching in a clock. So if we had someone that we wanted to track their time directly, it would be nice for them to just enter their time. This, you know, I clocked in at 8 and then I left at 12 or whatnot into this little section. And that can be automatically linked then to both the employee payment helping us to generate their paycheck and it can be linked to an invoice helping us to take that time record their billable hours and create an invoice related to the time worked by employee so that could be a really useful setup uh, some companies will use it within quickbooks sometimes uh, if you have a more complex system other uh, companies will have a system outside of quickbooks that'll track that time by employees and let different employees track that time. Some people might just ask their employees to fill out something like an Excel sheet telling us, you know, what, how much time you work, how many times you spent uh, on a particular client, and then enter that information into the system directly into the payroll processing. So uh, we, we'll not deal with that here. This processing here isn't mandatory to process payroll, but it's one step that could be used to track time uh, for employees that could then be used to process the payroll. Then we've got the pay employees. This is where we're actually going to process the payroll. 
So this happens depending on how often we pay employees. It could be weekly, it could be bi-weekly, it could be semi-monthly, it could be monthly that we pay employees. And when that happens, when we're going to actually kind of generate the checks typically, we would select this icon and actually uh, go through the process of recording if it was time here or salary-based employees generate the checks. Those checks would generate the check as well as any withholdings we have that we then need to pay to anybody that we have withheld for, including the government. So if we had taxes that we had to withhold for the government, or if we had other things that we had to withhold for, 401k plans, for, um, for health insurance and that kind of stuff, then we would have taken that out here as well. And then we're going to pay the liabilities. And this will help us to not pay the paycheck, but now pay those liabilities. If we withheld money for uh, federal withholding and state withholding, if, uh, if we had our portion of the payroll taxes, then we have to track all that. And this will give us a nice little setup for us to uh, pay that process here. So that's the normal kind of process we need for the employees. We need to enter the time somehow. We need to pay the employees based on the time if they're hourly or if they're salary. We need to process those paychecks and take the withholdings from the employees. Then we need to pay the liabilities, the amounts that we took from the employees, as well as our employer taxes uh, to whoever we owe them to, including typically a government for payroll taxes. Let's take a look at some of these options in payroll online, and we'll just take a look at some of our options in terms of payroll. First, we'll take a look at this little plus icon up top, and you'll notice we looked at these by sections, so it's similar to the home page in that we got customers, vendors, and employees. It doesn't give us that nice flow chart quite the same, but we have a similar processing. So here, we're going to have some similar items. We have the similar time tracking feature, where once again, employees can put in that time. We can, if it's just us, we can track our time in here and say, hey, this is how much time we build. And it's really nice to put that directly into QuickBooks if you can, because then it will be something that you can tie directly to payroll and or directly to invoices. And that's great. But uh, if it's something, it's also possible for you to do it outside to track your time in, in your calendar or something like that. Or in Excel or in some other, you know, more fancy. There's a lot of softwares that are fairly uh, uh, fancy in terms of tracking different times and allowing different people to log in. So uh, you may or may not use the, the time tracking, but uh, it, it can it has its pros and cons like anything else, especially within the payroll process. And then we've got the payroll item here, and we've got this little item here saying, hey, do you want to purchase payroll? And there's different, pay the reason payroll is a little bit more uh, unusual or a process that can cause problems or something that you may want to think about and talk to uh, a, an outside firm about possibly most likely someone who is not who you're not paying for payroll because you want an unbiased opinion about how payroll you know what's the best thing to do with payroll and uh, so I'm not saying that if, you, if you're looking for a payroll option to talk to a payroll company that does payroll that's great but obviously their opinion may be a little bit biased because they're trying to sell you a payroll service QuickBooks is the same way of course they are going to try to sell you their payroll service and have you process things within the QuickBooks system, which may work well for you, and it may be something that you want to do outside. So if you select this payroll option, then it's going to go through, you know, some of the items that you could do if you were to purchase payroll from uh, Intuit, the, the owner of QuickBooks. And we'll, we'll look at this a little bit more later, but there's different types of payroll options. These would be type of add-on programs, so they would cost more. And uh, if you get the higher version, then it'll do more of the processing. So just note when you process payroll, you're going to you're gonna have, uh, it gets way more complex depending on how many employees you have. And if we have different states, then that's going to get uh, more complex or different regions, then that gets more complex. And we get to the decision as to whether we want to do this within QuickBooks or whether uh, we want to have an outside CPA firm do uh, the payroll. So our options are to uh, process it in payroll here and pay the extra fee for QuickBooks to help us generate that payroll or I'm going to close this back out we could uh, get to another third party to help us to process the payroll and then enter that information into the system that doesn't mean that payrolls something we don't have to worry about anymore because we still need to put those paychecks in the system so that we have the check there we have the activity there we can process our, our reports as well but an outside firm like like an ADP or Paychex could help us to, to make sure that we're up to date on, on the withholdings and, and any kind of legal payroll requirements 
that we have. So those are some of our options. The, the left-hand side over here, we have the workers. So this is where we would set up our payroll. And whether we have payroll uh, set up or not, we're in the employees section, workers, employees. We could set up our employees here and say here, you know, here are the employees. And to set those up, we can add the employees here. And these would be, of course, part of the process for payroll to be set up. And payroll is another one of those items that really uh, is not too difficult to run on a cycle by cycle basis to actually process the checks if everything is set up meaning and we'll go through this process if the employees are set up if we've entered the correct information from the w-4s if we've got their wages set up if we've got the withholdings and um, uh, the time frame of when we process payroll in terms of weekly bi-weekly monthly semi-monthly all that set up correctly the processing of payroll then becomes easy easier uh, but setting up that process can be complex and understanding what the paycheck is actually doing in terms of these withholdings that we make will be a bit more complex. We'll take a look at those type of activities uh, as we go through our problem. Hello, in this presentation, we will be taking a look at the home page of QuickBooks Pro 2018, concentrating on the employee section of the home page. If you've been following along with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that's okay. We will be looking at the home page and looking at the employees section of the home page. If you have the backup file to this point, you can select the file tab and open the backup file. That'll take us to the same point. We also have the open windows tab open here. To get there, you go to the views and open window list. We have the home page open in the open windows that can be found in the company tab and the home page. We have before looked at the home page and concentrated on the vendor section, the customer section, and now we're concentrating on the employees section. The employees section will concentrate in on the paying process of employees and the paying of the liabilities for employees. If you don't see these icons, you probably don't have the payroll portion set up within uh, QuickBooks and you'll have to set up the payroll in order to see these icons. There's at least three different types of payroll settings that could be used for QuickBooks, three paid uh, payroll settings and one that is going to be a free setting. If you were to process payroll for any significant amount of employees, you'd want to use the paid versions typically because they will help you with the withholdings, calculating the withholdings in terms of Social Security medicare federal income tax and then uh, it often differs in terms of the state taxes so often the more uh, expensive plans might do more in terms of having different states and or multiple states and uh, it gets more complex because of course these states have different tax rates whereas the federal tax rates are all the same so we can process the federal tax rates across at least the united states if we got different states in different countries then that gets a little bit more difficult for the software to calculate. If you do use the free manual version, you will still see these icons and we can see this whole process. It's just that when you actually process the payroll, you would have to then calculate for each employee what the withholdings were. And that's doable, but it does get tedious uh, after a, a few employees. In any case, we've got the employee section with these three icons. It's gonna walk us through this process as we have seen in the vendor section and the customer section. It starts off with the time entry. This could be a useful feature in that we can use this kind of as a time clock, meaning we can uh, assign our time per employee in this time clock and kind of uh, track hours, whether they be billable hours or non-billable hours. And we can use that to then generate the uh, paychecks when we process the payroll. It's possible to use this and or not use this within the payroll process, within the employee process. It's not required, in other words, for us to enter the time into this process in order to process the payroll. Some companies might uh, enter the time. Other companies might be completely salary based, so they don't really have the time that they need to enter in order to process the payroll because they get paid a fixed amount each time. And uh, other people might process that information outside of QuickBooks and then just use QuickBooks in order to enter the, the employee data. It just depends on how you would like to work that. And then we have the pay employees. When, we're asking, when we are going to process the payment of the employees, 
this would be the icon we would use. And again, a lot of companies have different options for paying employees. They may use QuickBooks. You may be using something outside of QuickBooks. You may be using a third party vendor, in which case you would have to uh, get back to QuickBooks and enter the data into QuickBooks so that uh, you have the information in terms of employee expenses and the uh, employee liabilities for your for your data to make your financial statements correct. If we go into the pay employees section, you will see the items in terms of uh, processing the paychecks. And if we were to uh, click on any of these items, what we'll have here, we'll have the pay period, the period end, and then the check date. And then we'll have the check number. And then we'll have our list of employees. And if we take a look at the employees within the list, if we check them off and take a look at an employee within the list, we will see some of the detail here. So this is going to be a salaried employee. We'll have the salary and then we'll have the withholdings from this particular employee giving us the net check. Here we're using uh, the free version, the manual version of QuickBooks payroll processing. And when we work this, it's actually really good for an example problem to use the manual version because the tediousness of actually calculating out the withholdings will show us what the software is doing uh, and then we'll be able to, to work that out. So we have here no withholdings at this time. We'll calculate that at a later time. This will be the net check then. Over here, we're going to have the employer withholdings and uh, this will be the amount that the employer has to withhold on the employee wages. We'll talk more about that as we go, but I'm closing this back out. Point being, once we process this, payroll will have everything set up, meaning it'll, it'll debit the, the payroll expense accounts or increase the expense account. It'll increase the liabilities. It'll track who we owe. It'll track that we we owe the Fed money and the state money after we get that set up properly, which will mean that we're going to have to set up the employees and we're going to have to set up some items in terms of uh, items for the payroll items, uh, such as when do we pay employees and the hourly rates and the salaries and uh, who, do we, who do we pay in terms of payroll taxes. So once we get that set up, however, QuickBooks runs very well and we'll take a look at that as we go. We're then going to see this icon here, which is the pay liabilities. And that, of course, is going to be the, the icon that will help us to track what we owe. When we pay the employees, we have employee taxes that we that accumulate upwards, Social Security, Medicare, state taxes, FUTA, federal unemployment tax. And then the pay liabilities is going to help us to track that information and pay off those liabilities in the correct time period. So when we select this icon, it's going to help us to basically write a check, decreasing the bank account, and uh, then lower the liability, writing the check to the proper uh, liability, and then track that information, recording the reduction in the proper liability. We will see much more of this, of course, when we set up the payroll items, when we set up the company, and when we look through the reports, we'll be jumping back and forth to these icons to, to see these icons. These will be the driving icons. When we select these items, these are the things that QuickBooks uses in order to generate the financial statements. Therefore, when we look at the financial statements and we, and we drill back on them and try to see how they're created, how they're being made, we will end up going back to these icons, the processes within these icons.